The brain is the most important organ in the body. <laughs> so says the brain. But if there is any part of our precious cargo that could be called the hero of our story, it would be the heart. To understand the heart's significance, we need to first look at our blood cells. When these soldiers become used and exhausted, they march to the heart where they are quickly diverted to the lungs to receive another supply of oxygen and then summoned back to the heart once again where they are given a pep talk to prepare them for yet another lap around the circulatory system. When enough of these soldiers are ready for action, the heart gives a mighty heave to blast them all around the body, delivering this oxygen to where it's needed the most. Heaven forbid if the heart ever failed to complete this operation, oxygen would no longer reach any of our organs including the master brain and this could prove fatal within mere minutes. Which is why this process takes place roughly 115,200 times a day. But sometimes our heart decides that it's in everyone's best interest to beat a little faster. Perhaps you're running a marathon, or feeling anxious about a job interview, or you've just seen the love of your life for the first time. The details don't really matter because the heart responds to these incidents in much the same way, by speeding up its momentum and distributing more blood around our system. Which begs the question, why are some forms of a raised heart rate, such as jogging or dancing, encouraged by your doctor, while others, such as stress or smoking, warned against as potentially fatal? And to better understand this, we would need to look at each scenario individually. Undoubtedly, the most applauded method of raising one's pulse is exercise. When we partake in any physical activity, our muscles are quick to realize that they are in need of an additional boost and they cry out for help. The heart hears this call and comes to the rescue, pumping harder to speed up the blood flow and send more oxygen to those muscles, relieving them from any further distress. This means that while you're exercising, your heart is exercising with you, beat by beat every step of the way. And because the heart is a muscle itself, it progresses much like any other trained physical fiber, evolving into a much stronger machine, tougher, more resilient, and far more efficient at its job. That's why athletes are known to have a much lower heart rate, even when they are sitting still, because their heart is so powerful that it takes next to no effort to deliver the blood around the body. With that in mind, it's not too difficult to imagine that we could achieve the exact same health effects by, say, drinking an energy drink. After all, the heart rate will increase just like it did during a workout, so surely this will help it grow up into one tough and resistant asset too, right? And interestingly enough, this isn't too far from the truth. Studies have found that people who drink four to five cups of coffee per day had a lower risk of heart failure, coronary, coronary heart, <laughs> coronary, coronary, <laughs> how do you say that word? Coronary, coronary, coronary artery diseases and strokes, as well as having much improved vascular functions. They observed that by drinking caffeine, the brain fires its usual neurons at an accelerated rate, which keeps us awake and alert. However, this action also confuses your glands into worrying that you may be in trouble, and it reacts by dousing your innards with buckets of adrenaline, preparing you to either run away like a coward or stand and fight like the warrior you are. In turn, this raises your blood pressure, which requires the heart to beat faster to fulfill its usual day-to-day -day oxygen delivery quota, which is similar to exercise except in reverse. Your body is not requesting any help, but instead, you are forcing it to wake up and be energized, ready to spring into physical activity even if none is taking place. But while this can be advantageous, it is also where the true danger lies. Those same studies warned that any health benefits from drinking coffee are completely eradicated as soon as you drink more than five cups a day, and this same cautionary advice goes for energy drinks or any other naughty stimulants that you may be indulging in.
If we think back to a prolonged session of exercising, we will notice that there are a lot of fail-safe mechanics in the body designed to prevent you from pushing the heart too far. You may become exhausted or winded or even succumb to an injury, which will stop you in your tracks and force you into a much healthier rest period, granting the heart the space it needs to slow down and recover. However, if you're staying up night after night, guzzling highly caffeinated energy drinks just to cram for tomorrow's big test, your heart is enjoying the equivalent amount of stress as running on a treadmill for that same amount of time, which even the strongest of athletes wouldn't recommend without the proper training. Simply put, these methods of increasing the heart rate are completely self-administered and put the individual in charge over the body's normal functions, which is a power most of us are not responsible enough to handle. Similar negative effects can also be examined in connection to our emotions. Whether excited or anxious, the heart's enthusiastic reaction is almost identical and can lead to the same terrible side effects. The difference, however, comes with the emotions themselves. A happier onset tends to fade faster into a pleasant, relaxing afterglow, whereas their negative counterparts can potentially lead to chronic diseases and phobias, which tend to last longer and therefore place you at a greater risk. All you need to remember is that without the gradual training or appropriate resting period, an extended hyperactive heartbeat is your body's way of telling you that your blood is struggling to circulate properly. Keep this up for an abnormal period of time, and this is the equivalent of overtraining. Your heart's performance can decrease, your arteries may stiffen, your heart's walls may thicken, and ultimately you could end up with a stroke, a cardiac arrest, or even a full-blown heart attack. Which is why, by limiting or removing your stimulant intake, exercising regularly with a healthy rest time, and routinely visiting your doctor, the chances of you and your heart living a long, happy life are vastly improved. And so, if you abide by these simple steps, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. After all, worrying is bad for your heart. Did you enjoy that episode? Press the like button if you did. Want to see more? What if you clicked subscribe? Oh, and make sure you click on the little bell so you don't miss another video ever again. In fact, we've got a new one coming out every week. Prepare your mind for more tantalizing hypotheticals.